Hey, good morning everyone, Trackman44 here. Hey, do you guys ever wake up in the morning and have your house just cold as cold can be? Um, you look at the thermostat and it says it's like 70, 71 degrees in the house and you got the set point at 75 or 76. Well, that's what happened to me this morning. So for a change, I get to work on my own air conditioner today. When that happens, obviously there's a mechanical issue or something of that nature, meaning that whenever the thermostat satisfies, the air conditioner continues to run. Okay, now, normally if you don't have your fan in the on position running continuously and your air conditioner contactor or whatever welds itself together, the contacts get stuck. Whenever the blower motor shuts off when the thermostat gets to temperature, the air conditioner will continue running. And because there's no air flowing across the evaporator coil, it'll develop a freezing condition and it'll go ahead and freeze into a big old solid ball. And then, of course, it gets warm in your house, you know, and because there's no air conditioning being produced, because there's no air the air passing across the coil to have the heat extracted from, so the, the refrigerant continues to cycle, but the humidity in the surrounding air just keeps building that A coil or evaporator coil thicker and thicker and thicker with a block of ice. Then you end up with a big mess. Mine did not freeze up. It just kept getting colder and colder and colder because I run my fan in the on position from spring all the way through summer and all the way into the late fall. What you saw me do, I just turned the power off out here and you can hear the uh, contactor still pulled in. Uh, so that means that the contactor for whatever reason, electrically or mechanically is not wanting to release, even though I've got the thermostat physically turned to the all position inside. So we're gonna have to open this up and see what we can find in here. But I know the thermostat is not calling, but I can hear the buzzing, which means there's going to be 24 volts on that coil. But we're going to establish that that's the case. And then we're gonna go from there. If you take the cover off with the power on, there's still 240 volts single phase power in there that can short against the door if you let the door slip and stuff into it. But I went ahead and turned the air con the uh, power supply off before I opened this up. But I can see right there that the contactor, and you can hear it humming, so it's pulled in. So let's check and verify we have voltage on that coil. Twenty-five point seven volts. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go in and pull the thermostat physically off the wall to make sure the cooling relay or something inside the thermostat is actually stuck. And that's what's allowing the signal to be sent out here to pull the contactor in. Well, I went in and pulled my thermostat off the wall. What I've got, I've got a seven day programmable Brayburn thermostat. Uh, this is a very good thermostat. It's been a very, very accurate, very reliable. But let me show you something that should allow you to learn from my mistake. Now, I'm not saying this is a problem. I don't know yet if, that's, if this is the issue. But when I pull it off the wall, here's the reason why you should always check your batteries at least once a year or every six months. If you can look there really close, hopefully we can focus on that. But we have a tremendous amount of, of corrosion on the battery terminals. So those batteries are actually failing. They've been in there for so long. So even if I lost power, this thing wouldn't have, uh, wouldn't have maintained you know, the programming or anything. You know what I mean? So I'm going to go ahead and pull those out and uh, clean those up and everything. There is a slight possibility that it's the issue, but probably not. Uh, the only way it could is if the corrosion has made its way into the circuitry on the circuit board and actually have fused or closed the circuit on the cooling side to, to continue sending the signal out here to the, uh, air, to the air conditioner. Now take a good look at the batteries I just pulled out of this thermostat. Hopefully you can see that corrosion just all over them. All right, now what I've done, I went out to the shed and I used my machinist files and I on these springs in here, the battery retainers, I went ahead and cleaned all the corrosion as much as I could off of those. I actually used the points file from old tractors uh, because it's a nice little thin flat file and I was able to get in here and, and get a lot of that corrosion or the majority of the corrosion off. So that's clear. And if you notice one thing in the background, you don't hear that buzz of the contactor. When I pulled that thermostat off, we lost our 24 volt signal to the contactor. So. We can remain a bit optimistic and hope that that was the problem, that there's some of that corrosion was causing the problem on the circuit board. But we can just remain optimistic, put new batteries in it, and see what happens. Well, guys, I've got good news and I've got bad news. The good news is it's apparently the thermostat is at fault. But the bad news is I don't have a heat pump thermostat in stock. This is a heat pump. In other words, there's apparently some damage done by all that corrosion on the circuit board that actually leaked out of those batteries. And the only way I can get the actual air conditioner and blower to shut off is by physically removing the thermostat from the sub base, turning it to the off position, turning it to any position at all. 
it continues to run the air conditioning. So there's no reason to believe that there's going to be any other issue. So I'm going to go ahead and change that thermostat. Got to make a quick run to our local supply house and come back with heat pump thermostat and about $200 less in my pocket, so to speak. And uh, we're going to go ahead and put that on there and then go ahead and make sure this thing's going to work. That brings up another point. First and foremost, you need to make sure you pop your thermostat off and check your battery, the condition of your batteries, and even change them, you know, like once a year at the very minimum. But the second thing is I've had so many service calls in the past 45, 48 years where people say, oh, my thermostat's bad. I need a new thermostat. And you go, that thermostat's not bad. Thermostats are very seldom, very seldom what the issue. Now, they, they do fail, and as thousands of service calls that I've ran, I've replaced hundreds of thermostats, probably even more than that. But the vast majority of time when people think it's a thermostat, it is not. So today, I didn't think of a thermostat, and it more than likely is. So I'll be back with a new one here in a little bit. You can never really make assumptions, you know, whenever you're troubleshooting. Uh, I mean, you have to assume some things, but then you have to double check everything to make sure. Uh, the reason you can't make assumptions is because my assumption was that it couldn't possibly be the batteries being the issue or the corrosion inside those uh, inside the thermostat has been issued. But in actuality, that is exactly what the problem was. That corrosion actually flowed down in and on the circuit board of that thermostat, rendering it inoperative. So uh, happy to say we've got it fixed. It was really quite simple. I just had to install a new thermostat. But sadly, my billfold is about $200 thinner because I put on what's called the Sensi stat. And we'll go in and take a look at that. But it's a thermostat that's actually controlled by your cell phone or by your, uh, by your laptop. That's actually pretty cool. But uh, it's a little unnecessary, I think, you know, considering I come from the time when we had uh, coal-fired boilers and coal-fired gravity furnaces and things that I worked on. And now we're all the way at this new age of uh, wireless communication, you know what I mean? Just pretty amazing to me. But at any rate, I'm going to go ahead and uh, do a little bit of maintenance here, cover this thing back up. I've already been through the complete test out procedure from inside to thermostat. Uh, the hardest thing for me was getting it connected to Wi-Fi. I actually had to call my daughter, and my daughter, you know, lives right next door to me. She come up and she walked me right through getting it connected to Wi-Fi. Because when it gets into all the Wi-Fi passwords and all that stuff, I'm really pretty uh, not. I'm pretty inept at that point. So let me button this up and we'll come back. So guys, here's, here's the solution for the day. We went ahead and uh, had to install that new thermostat and it's fully Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi compatible, but it's just also all touchscreen control too. And it's very simple to program. It's just a, a few screens that you have to go through in order to get a program. But you do have to actually enter your, or get it to start communicating with your, with your Wi-Fi network first. But it's really as cool as can be. But here's all the different set points. Here's your scheduling. There's your Wi-Fi. This tells you a little bit about the thermostat. It gives the model number, serial number, and everything of it. And just everything under the sun that you can possibly imagine and things you can't even imagine. But uh, to make a long story short, you push the menu button and it takes you right up to here. And whenever the thermostat is actually satisfied, it'll show gray. But whenever it's cooling and in the cooling mode, it'll be blue. And when it's heating in the heating mode, the, uh, the screen will be red. So that's really a pretty cool, pretty cool setup. So guys, take this as a lesson for me. You should go ahead and pull your thermostat off if you have a battery backup in it and check your thermos, your batteries at least one time every year. And it'll end up saving you uh, a couple of hundred dollars if you have to pay somebody to come and do it. This was an extremely expensive thermostat. It cost me an arm and a leg just about uh, just to get it myself. So if you have a contractor to do this particular work, it's going to be very expensive for you. However, if you're just a, a regular homeowner that really doesn't understand electricity, you're kind of over the barrel and you actually have to pay a contractor to come and do it, or at least a friend that might do air conditioning on the side. But take a look at those batteries once again. There's 90 cents worth of batteries just cost me $200 for a thermostat. So you know what? Everything is copacetic, everything is cooling fine, and it's cycling the way it's supposed to. And uh, kudos to my daughter for coming up and getting me uh, onto the <laughs> getting me connected to the internet. So at any rate, this is Trackman44. I hope you all have a good day. I'm out of here, guys.